Can you manage emotional triggers? That's what this week's topic's about. But first, my name is Michelle Ferris. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I help codependent people create mutually satisfying relationships without sacrificing themselves. So what is an emotional trigger? For me, it's an intense reaction to a present situation that reminds you of something in the past that's really painful or not resolved yet. So it can be a childhood trauma, it could be something in your past that was extremely hurtful. So you're gonna be a lot more sensitive to that issue as an adult. Now the thing is, is the intensity has to do more with the past and less with the present. But because the present situation is so similar, we don't tend to recognize it. We think for sure it's about what's currently happening to us. But the power in recognizing your triggers is being able to trace them back and see where they're coming from. Because when you can do that, you can one, have empathy for that present situation because you realize that it's not all about what the other person's doing to you. And two, you're gonna have a major piece of your own history that you can work on in your therapy or in your own personal growth. Because when you know what the original trigger is, you can do some writing about it, you can do some other things to help heal that. So let's talk about what are some common triggers that people get stuck in. So the first one is any perceived criticism or judgment. That's a big trigger. Uh, not being heard or respected is another one. Uh, feeling abandoned or dismissed can be another one. Fearing that you're not enough is another one. And for sure, a tone of voice, whether it's harsh or condescending, tone of voice is another really big trigger for a lot of us. And the reason that happens is because when we grow up in childhood, we are like sponges as kids and we soak up the emotional environment of our family. So if you have any type of dysfunction, what you're gonna do as the child is you're going to do whatever you can to stay safe. So you learn how to take the emotional temperature of the room, which means you're scanning your environment constantly, figuring out who's upset, and how can you get away from them to stay safe? Especially if there's been abuse in your background, you're going to be hypersensitive and even hypervigilant around other people's emotions. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. In our adult life, this could be really good because we are able to survey our surroundings and know when other people are upset and when we may need to exit. The problem is if we assign meaning to that emotion and assume that it's about us, that's when we get triggered and that's when it causes a lot of problems. So kids can't really decipher what's healthy behavior and what isn't when they're growing up because they're just living in it. And when there's abuse or dysfunction, they learn to stay quiet and get out of the way and take the emotional temperature of the room. This creates a type of sensitivity or hyper vigilance that can be difficult in relationship. If we're not aware of that hypervigilance and that sensitivity, we could really personalize people's behaviors in our adult relationships that isn't really accurate. So that's part of what happens when we're triggered is we assume the worst in that situation. We think we're being perceived as less than, or we think we're not being heard, or we're being disrespected. When really, most of the time in that present situation, the other person doesn't have that intent. But when we're triggered, we're overreacting to that situation, and that's always the key. If the reaction is bigger than the situation warrants, then you're probably triggered. So how do you deal with a trigger? three ways. One is you got to identify it. So what I would recommend is do some journal writing and write about how that present situation hurts and write about what that reminds you of in your past. Because usually when we're really, really hurt about something, there is a link to the past in some way. And if you can get that link, that's what's going to unlock some of the intensity in the moment. And you're gonna probably look to that other person with a little bit more empathy, and that's gonna help the relationship. So what I would do is do some writing and see if you can connect that present situation to something that's happened in the past. The second part is you gotta remove yourself when you're triggered. Because when we're triggered, we're in that fight or flight response. 
We want to flee. We want to advocate for ourselves, especially if you come from a dysfunctional family where you weren't protected. That's when your adult is going to want to be your protector and really get in and fight. But the problem is, is that's the worst time to advocate for yourself because when you're triggered, you've got a lot going on emotionally and your emotions are just too hot because you're reacting to something in the present as if it was a trauma in the past. And that's why you really wanna avoid trying to talk something out when you're in the middle of a trigger. The third key is I want you to notice what are the early warning signs of your trigger? Like, is your heart rate beating too fast? Are you having intense negative thoughts? Are you assuming one of those triggers is happening like they don't love me right now or I'm being uh, dismissed? And that negative self-talk is going to help you recognize your stress so that you can recognize that it's a trigger. You're going to know that it's not all about your present situation. It's much more about the past and that's going to help release it but you can't do it unless you walk away. So this is the perfect time to take a time out. Call a friend, uh, do some writing. See if you can understand the meaning of your reaction and try not to judge it because when we're triggered, it doesn't make logical sense. And this might also be when your partner gives you feedback like, wow, you're really losing it. Whenever I'm told that I'm overreacting, I know I'm in a trigger. And again, don't judge yourself for that because we all have these triggers. And in the last few weeks, I've been talking about tone of voice. And you know, if you grew up in a family where there was rage, you are gonna react a lot more to somebody's tone. And even the hint of upset is gonna send you into anxiety. And that's because that may be a childhood trigger for you that you need to work through. And when you hear a tone, you may have to take a break and you may have to use positive self-talk like this is not about my childhood, I am okay, I'm safe because triggers can be managed, but we can't manage them with the person who's triggering us. You have to manage them separately and get support from neutral people, not from the person who's triggering you because they're not gonna be able to give it. They're gonna have their own point of view on what's happening at that moment and they're gonna wanna defend themselves that they're not actually triggering you and you don't want that. You want somebody that's totally away from the situation to walk you through and talk you through uh, calming down and taking care of yourself. Because over time, the more you recognize your triggers, the more you're gonna get control of them. But this takes some time. So at first, I want you to notice the early warning signs when you are intensely reacting. Remove yourself from the situation and go right, because that's gonna help you learn what your triggers are. And if this has been helpful for you in any way, I would love it if you hit subscribe and become part of my community. Thanks so much for being here. Bye.